Well, I'm sure you're wondering what on earth I'm doing out here on this bush track in literally the middle of nowhere. <laughs> this is just exactly the place I love to be. And you know, I'm doing today what I do an awful lot of my adventures. And you people ask me all the time, how do I find locations to shoot my nightscape photography? Well, I'll tell you what I do. I jump in the car and I drive up and down dirt tracks just like this one, looking all around the countryside, trying to find compositions. Okay, you're probably thinking, well, he's in the middle of a forest. There's no nightscape compositions in there. Well, you're probably right, but it doesn't matter because I'm on the way to somewhere. There's something at the end of this track is gonna show me something. But anyway, I digress because the point of this video is not really about searching for nightscape uh, photographs. It's about gadgets and things that I use and perhaps sometimes modify to make my job a little bit easier. So what exactly am I talking about? Well, what I'm going to do is find a nice little clearing somewhere and we'll sit down and we'll have a bit of a chat and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, well, I found this little spot, gorgeous little place just off the mountain. So I've come right across the top of the mountain and I'm here, bought myself a pasty at the local bakery and I'm into it now. Oh, nice, very nice indeed. So you'll have to indulge me a little bit while I have my lunch. But as soon as I finish my lunch, I'm gonna show you a few of these little tips and tricks that I've got to make my life a little bit easier, especially when I'm away from home on these road trips. Oh, whoo hoo, gee, that breeze is chilly. Okay, so what exactly is it that I'm talking about? You know, many times in my videos, I talk to you guys about the one percenters. One percenters, uh, little increments that make up the whole 100%, obviously. Now, the photography that I do is quite complex and it involves many, many factors. And you know, there's, there's the little things that can make all the difference between having a, a really enjoyable night photo shoot or being under the pump a little bit. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you has absolutely nothing to do with photography. But what it does do is enable me to, uh, I guess, get more enjoyment and, and practical enjoyment out of my nightscape adventures. And that simply is my jet boil, little uh, gadget that I've created here, which is a tripod mount. And all it is, is a Manfrotto plate. Have a look at that. That's attached to the bottom of my jet boil. Now, I'll just try and take that off for you so you can see exactly what it looks like. Oh boy, oh boy, man, oh man. It's on tight, but it's meant to be on tight because you don't want it coming off. So this is the standard jet boil uh, canister and they come in all sorts of brands and sizes. Um, there's one I bought on my road trip recently. Doesn't matter, they're all pretty much the same. But this is the base of the jet boil the orange part here. And you can see what I have done is actually modified to put a Manfrotto plate on the top of it. So hopefully you can see that. Okay, so I'll stick it out in the sun here so it's a bit easier for you to see. And what I have done, it's got a Manfrotto plate on the bottom, which is attached via a little piece of metal bracket, which I manufactured myself with a nut and bolt through there to attach it. So it's just simply clamped on. There's nothing scientific about this, nothing actually difficult about this. I've just manufactured it so that it quickly attaches to my tripod. So you can see it there, it just clips on. And because I'm on a ball head, I can put that round to any angle that I want. So if I'm on uneven terrain, it does not matter. It's always gonna be in the orientation that I'm looking for. And of course how that works, it just clips on to your bottle just like that there we go and that's on there just like that as you can see won't come off now that will sit on a tabletop as well which it's meant to do but in my case when i'm out in the middle of nowhere i don't have a tabletop and this is just perfect one percenter yes it is a one percenter 
but it really does the trick and it makes my life a whole lot easier when I want to make myself a cup of tea or boil up something to create a, a, an instant meal or something like that. Just awesome. Now I can almost read some of your minds. You're thinking, get on with it, get to the photography. And this is my point. You know, not everything about photography is actually about photography. It doesn't make sense to some of you, I get that. But you know, the, the, the motivation and whatever it is that inspires you and helps you to get out there to shoot, every single one of those points, the one percenters, makes all the difference. Now, just while I'm talking about uh, tripod mounts, I actually bought these little tiny tripods. They're a slick brand, a slick mini tripod. You can see there. And I bought them from Officeworks here in Australia. Now, Officeworks just sells office supplies, nothing to do with photography. And what I did, um, I took the top that was originally on them off, and they sort of look like that. They've just got a little tiny quarter inch thread poking up there. But they're actually not a bad little tiny tripod. You think, oh, who cares about a little tripod? Just bear with me. And then I bought these on eBay, the cheapest little uh, ball head that you could possibly get. Now, this one does have a Manfrotto plate, the same as what I had on my jet boil. So what you'll see here with a lot of the equipment, I'm using my cameras, tripods, sliders, you name it, everything has the same Manfrotto plate. My cameras, everything. So what I'm saying here is I can mix and match all of my equipment, regardless of whether it's my jet boil or my cameras or my video cameras, everything. I'm still using Manfrotto. Now, I know a lot of you will be using Arca Swiss plates. There's no reason why you can't change any of this to Arca Swiss. I just prefer the quick release mechanism that the Manfrotto has. And I've always had uh, Manfrotto quick release plates, probably because I started with Manfrotto tripods and that's okay. But I want to show you my number one use these days for these little tiny tripods. And you're thinking to yourself, ah. Oh, it's just a little tripod, who cares? What, what, are you, what are you gonna do with that? I'm a real photographer. I have a big, solid, heavy tripod. Let me just show you. All right, now the first and most obvious use of this little tripod is obviously to get down low to the ground like this. Now I can just grab my camera, stick it on there, and I have a very low down mounted camera. Now, just because it's a small, cheap, tripod doesn't mean that it's not useful in a lot of circumstances now i've got a camera here z6 with a 14 to 24 f 2.8 you know it's it's light-ish but it's not a tiny little pocket camera or something like that and it is very solid on that mounting and if i'm on a decent surface on the ground i have no problems putting this on to shoot a very low angle nightscape photograph the reality is it's very hard to tip that over because of the low center of gravity. So don't dismiss small, you know, it's, it's basically made out of plastic and aluminium, but it's so low to the ground that it is very, very practical. And if I wanted to get my big Surui tripod or one of those down this low, it's almost impossible. I've got to spread it right out wide and then I've got too much height in the center column part, even though I've got a short center column. So these are just the things I'm talking about. Something small like this, is actually a really practical tool to have in your toolbox. Okay, so for another little uh, hack, if you like, you might remember a, a little while ago, I talked about my Zeppon motorized time-lapse slider, and this is it here. This is the Zeppon E800. Now, it's a great piece of gear. Uh, now, when you buy these, they ship with these little legs that come out like so, and you can put them down like so, and, and put it flat onto a tabletop. And that works pretty well, as long as you've got a tabletop. Um, and other than that, what they have are these little rods, which I showed you in the video, that push into the end here, and you attach that to your tripod leg. So you can mount this on a tripod and sort of put that down and extend them out. It extends out quite a way, as you can see there, right down so, something like that. And you can attach those to your tripod legs and it stops it from wobbling down when the weight of the camera and the motor gets to the end. And it works quite well. Problem is, 
and this is what I faced very early on in the piece. If I want to mount my time-lapse slider close to the ground, let's just say I want to be about six inches or 150 millimeters off the ground, well, you can see I've already got a problem because these things are already about 300 millimeters long. They're just too long. I, I, I can't fit it in. So therefore, I'm, I'm, I'm going without my struts to support. So I came up with another use for my Manfrotto tripod plates and worked out how to mount them on the ends. So what I did, I grabbed these little aluminium brackets, as you can see, stuck on another Manfrotto tripod plate. Okay, and I thought to myself, okay, I can use my little tripods once again. They're only about 150 mil off the ground or thereabouts, perfect for what I want. And again, if I could mount the, somehow mount this Zeppon slider on each end to this, I'd be happy because there's no way knowing it's gonna fall over or move. And the other advantage of having a system like that is that these little tripods have an adjustment. So I can go up and down, you know, there's about two inches or maybe, maybe about 60 or 70 millimeters of movement there. That makes it easy to line up the slider. So if you're ever shooting with a, a slider, you need it to be level. Otherwise, you know, your footage starts to go up or down the hill. That reminds me, the other thing I always bring with me is a little tiny spirit level. As you can see, spirit level, uh, I just stick that on the top of the slider and I know exactly whether I've got everything level. Great little addition. $2 from the reject shop or something like that. All right, so let me show you exactly how I set these up. Okay, so on the end of these little brackets that come out the side, there are these tiny little uh, stoppers. You can unscrew them and it reveals a thread, as you can see there. So we just take those off. And then I've got my bracket, which is just a straight piece of aluminium with slots. I've drilled the holes out so that you can fit these threads through. Put them on like so, just like that. And then I'll put these back on. I thought to myself for a while, I thought, well, maybe I should just get some nuts or something, but I might as well just use the, the gear that's already part of it. Makes sense to me because then I'm not gonna lose them when I take them off and they're there. And you can see what I'm doing there. Just screwed that back on. Now I've got quite a solid, once they're screwed down tight like that, this does not move. It's as solid as a rock. So I just do it on the other end as well, exactly the same thing. And there we go. And as you can see, once they're on there, they're really tight. I didn't do anything else except put that plate on. And then the really easy part from there is to get my little bracket, my little tripod, loosen off the ball head, and then just stick it on like a normal quick release plate. I'll do the other side as well. Stick that on like that. Quick release now. All I then need to do is do that up, something like that, something like that. And Bob is your uncle. We have our slider, perfectly level, very rigid, and I can place the legs wherever I want them. Typically what I do is make sure one is sticking at the end because when the slider extends out, all the weight comes on the end there. And, um, but that works, it's really solid. And I can adjust these legs a little bit to make it work on a little bit uneven ground as well. And there I have my slider, nice and low to the ground, but I couldn't possibly do this with the fixture with those other legs that are attached with this device. So as you can see, I'm using budget equipment, a little bit of ingenuity and uh, a little bit of creativity. I mean, the, the Zeppon slider itself is a budget piece of equipment, but it, it really punches above its weight. It's a fantastic piece of equipment. But there you have it, there's another use for these tiny little tripods and the little quick release plates just on a piece of aluminium bracket. Okay, now whilst we're still on the topic of tripods, this is something that has bothered me for many years. And that is, when I've got my tripod up fairly high and I'm shooting particularly a time lapse, um, the, the wind gets up and, and something happens in the tripod, I'm always thinking, is that tripod going to fall over? Now you may remember, when I was in Tasmania last year, I was shooting a, a gorgeous time lapse, had my camera up reasonably high, not quite as high as this, but pretty high. I came back and found the tripod laying on its side, the camera on the ground, still recording that time lapse. Now, luckily, the camera didn't break uh, and it kept recording and 
no problems with the lens or anything. I did, however, break the tripod plate underneath the camera. But uh, yeah, that's okay, that's only a few dollars. So I've been looking for solutions. Now, one solution I've come across is this little bag, which just clips on, You've got these little clips, and it goes around your tripod here, and you put a weight in there. And uh, you can put rocks, stones. I've done this plenty of times. You'll see probably in a few of my videos where I've done that very thing. Put the rocks in there and it actually helps to weigh the tripod down. Um, a lot of people talk about hanging camera bags and things like that underneath tripods to stop the wind. Well, the problem with that, as a lot of people would know, is that if you've got something hanging from the center, yes, it will stop the tripod from moving unless the wind starts rocking that center piece, whether it's a camera bag or whatever, and that can start hitting the side of your tripod and suddenly you're getting vibrations. So it sort of may stop the tripod from falling, but it won't stop the vibrations. Whereas this, it's anchored on all three legs. And if you've got a nice solid uh, weight in there, like a big rock or something, it works pretty well. So these are, I bought this on eBay. It's a very, very cheap thing, pretty strong. Uh, it'll just adapt to any tripod you want. You know, we learn, don't we, by our mistakes. Remember, one percenters. You're learning by mistakes, that is another one percenter. But anyway, yeah, this thing works really well. Now, even though this system does actually do the trick pretty well, there are some occasions where I'm just not confident just by simply using that alone. For example, I might be on the edge of very rough terrain. Recently in South Australia, I was on the edge of a cliff shooting a time-lapse. I had some reasonably heavy time-lapse equipment sitting on top of the tripod, very top heavy, and I did have rocks here, but I found myself having to prop the tripod legs at the bottom with further rocks just to stop any potential rocking or movement and, and disaster with a whole lot falling down the cliff face. So my little brain got ticking away when I got home from that trip and I came up with these. It's a little clamp, which I already had a whole stack of these at home. Have a look at that. That's a clamp. So I can clamp that onto my tripod leg right down at the bottom and then what I've done I've just got a little threaded uh, thing here as you can see which they've got threads in the bottom of them have a look at that and I can put that that's a quarter inch thread just the same as a tripod has but I can screw that on there and I bent up this little piece of metal bracket and why would I do that well all I'm doing is I'm clamping that onto the bottom of my tripod leg just down there like that. All I'm doing, I'm clamping that down, and then when I do that, I put a rock on top of that metal bracket. Now these metal brackets could be as big or as small or as long or as short as you want, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that I'm locking the bottom of each tripod leg down. It cannot possibly move with these clamped down. Now they don't have to clamp tight because on the bottom of my tripod, as you can see, there's a tripod foot or an end. It's not gonna slide off, it can't possibly do that. But the fact that these little clamps uh, have got rubber inside them, probably can't see that, but they've got rubber inside, which means that they're soft. They're not gonna do any damage to my tripod legs. Now this is carbon fiber, so I'm, you know, I'm gentle. But this is an idea that, I, that was sparked from that trip over to South Australia where I thought, oh, I'm always worried about the tripod. So with these in place, I have no issue at all because the, the, the rock idea here does work, of course it works. But having the bottom of the tripod legs secured very firmly with rocks or a heavy branch of a wood or something like that, there is no possible way that this tripod is going anywhere. And I think that is one of the most valuable one percenters. In fact, I'd probably give it about a three or four, maybe even a five percent, this one. This is an absolute genius idea. Now, one of the things I'm continually trying to do is modify these ideas. So what I've done here, I've attached the same clamp to a magic arm. A lot of people have these magic arms laying around in their kit bag. Also, this L-shaped aluminium bracket. And what I can do with that is actually change the angle so it makes it a lot easier to put a weight on uneven ground. So I just do that up nice and tight, just like that. Grab a rock, put it on there, and that is stuck solidly. It is not going anywhere. Maybe I've got a piece of wood or something lying around in the bush. Just put it on there like that, 
and there's no way known that this tripod leg is going anywhere. All right, well, perhaps I am slightly getting a bit carried away there, but I think you get the drift of what this video is all about. You see, often we have very heavy, expensive equipment like this Star Tracker sitting on top of tripods and everything becomes very top heavy. So, you know, I think it's, it's important for us to think about the small ways that we can overcome some of these quite large problems. And you know, as I've mentioned from the very beginning of this video, it's the very small details that add up to make a big difference to our photography in the long run. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, oh, look, I'm out here on a gorgeous location, looking up at the mountains over there. I think I might have to get this little baby and a few of those other little babies into action as long as I can get this cloud to disappear. Man, oh man, it's frustrating sometimes. But you know, it's part of the thrill of the chase of shooting nightscape photography. All right, you guys have a fantastic week and I'll see you in the next video.